Now this is to give you a little review of part two. Before I do that, you're looking at on the screen now, part one, and that's the Israel King's timeline chart. The top row showing you all of the kings of Israel and on the bottom line, all of the kings of Judah. And of course, the only people who kept the commandments of God are those five mentioned in blue on the bottom line of Judah. Otherwise, none of them kept the commandments of God. Now, I've just shown you on the screen the chart of the timeline of all the kings of Israel and all of the kings of Judah from Solomon and from David going through from Jeroboam on the kings of Israel and going through from Rehoboam all the way through. And the chart showed you that from 721, all of Israel was taken captive. And then, of course, later on, 586 BC, uh, all of Judah was taken captive and they were all taken down to Babylon. Now, there's been a lot of theories go through all of the churches and Judaism about the Second Covenant. And a lot of people say that the Second Covenant is Christianity or the Second Covenant is the Christian people, etc., etc. Well, I can assure you that's not true. That is in error. And why do I say that? Well, I've shown you in the chart that the since 721 BC, there was no Israel. Israel had disappeared totally. There was no Israel. And there was no Israel for a couple of hundred years. Really speaking, with the prophets of Jeremiah, you'll find that Jeremiah is talking about a prophecy concerning Israel. Now, Jeremiah knew that Israel didn't exist for something close to a hundred years. Now, why would this prophet, knowing that the people didn't exist, be telling a story and doing a prophecy on some people that didn't exist anymore? And he knew that. So who are and who is the Israel that he's referring to? Yahweh was giving him a new covenant, a new covenant covering the Israel that he's referring to, knowing that the Israel had already been rejected by Yahweh because they did not keep his law. So today, if you want to think that there is a new set of people called, or a new group of people called Israel that can ignore God's law and still be in the team, that Jeremiah is talking about, well, think again, because the people that is referring to as Israel, as I said before, are people that keep God's law. Now, I'm going to read to you the text concerning this, and it comes out of Jeremiah. I would advise you to, to read Jeremiah 29, 30, and 31, but I'm going to read you some text out of Jeremiah 31. And it's about what Yahweh says. He's, now, Yahweh, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country. Well, where's the north country? That's the entire northern hemisphere. It's in Europe. So he's going to gather his people from the north country and gather them from the ends of the earth. And gather them from the ends of the earth amongst them, the blind, the lame, the women with children, and the ones who labor with child together. A great throng shall return there. They shall come with weeping and with supplications and he will lead them. He will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way in which they shall not stumble. It says that for I am the father of Israel and Ephraim my, is my firstborn. Hear the word of Yahweh, O nations. O who? Nations, plural. That's USA, that's England, that's Sweden, that's Germany, that's Australia. That's all the nations of the world. Now read that line again. Hear the word of Yahweh, O nations, and declare it in the islands far off, Yahweh says. Well, where's the islands far off? Australia's an island far off from where this place was talking about. It goes on to say... He who scattered Israel to the entire globe, 
the entire earth, and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. For Yahweh has redeemed Jacob. The word Jacob there is referring to Israel. And the word Israel, of course, is not referring to a bunch of people over there calling themselves Jews, which are out of one tribe, Judah. It goes on further to say, and I'll read this little bit to you. Um, Behold, the day of the coming, says Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Well, how is he going to make a new covenant with a group of people that have been rejected by him for not keeping his law and the house of Judah for not for uh, another house of Judah which he has also rejected because they didn't keep his law. The words go from verse 32, pick it up with me, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant, which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says Yahweh, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahweh. I will put my law in their minds. Well, he didn't do that back there in prior to 721 BC. He rejected them. They rejected his law, so he rejected them. Goes on to say, I will make the house of Israel after those days to show I will put my law in their minds and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Yahweh, for they all shall know me. How many people? Don't forget it was talking about all the nations of the earth. Now, it goes further to say, For they shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity, I will forgive their sin, and I will remember their sins no more. Now, if that be the case, well, who are these people? Well, again, I'll just reiterate and say that they're people that are keeping the law of God. They are keeping his commandments. They are not a bunch of people or a group of people as is there over there in Israel today. The people that are there in Israel today coming out of one tribe, Judah, they come out of the Khazars. Khazaria, and I've shown you on the map where Khazaria is, which is southern Russia today, or well, um, Georgia, uh, Georgia. The Khazars usurp the position of being the Jews, but the Jews, the word Jews, came only into notice by the New Testament Bible. Before then, Israel was not called Jews, Israel was Israel. So you can't nominate just one tribe, Judah or Yehuda, as being the name Israel. It's only one tribe. But the people that call themselves Jews, covering all of Israel, assert that position when they are not the same bloodline out of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. They are so foreign. In other words, there's a time that the Gentiles are in charge of Jerusalem and you are looking at that time now and that's what's been happening since 1947-1948. People who think that the Israel came back to Israel and they use these texts to support that theory are in grave error. Also, if you want to work out the sovereign rights of everybody around this area, I'm pointing to where Ammon became the territory. And if you look at that in relation to, there it is, the Dead Sea, and there is Bathsheba, and there is Jerusalem. And of course, again, you've got the Kingdom of Moab and the Kingdom of Edom, all that area there. You've got a little bit tucked over here where you've got the Philistines, and all this area is the northern ten tribes of Israel. And of course, there's Akko tucked in there. And of course, up here you've got Beirut. And there's... So to sum it all up, who is the Israel that was dispersed 
2,700 years ago or more, where are they today? There's lots of people who claim that they are spiritual Israel. They claim that they are the Israel mentioned in the new covenant of Jeremiah's prophecies. Well, you be the judge after you've read it, and you will realize because Jeremiah knew that Israel had ceased to exist when he wrote those stories. And the only way you can find out who Israel is today is to ask God. Yahweh God knows who they are and where they are because it was by his hand that they were scattered across the earth.